Okay, so PinOS is out for the Raspberry Pi 5 and I've had trouble getting it working. But thanks to Marsan, he sent me the latest EEPROM update and now PinOS is working fine. So what I'll do is show you how to run multiple operating systems from one SD card or USB stick with your Raspberry Pi 5. So first up, let's shut this down. Now if I remove my SD card and switch on, my Pi will tell me what bootloader version I have. And in this case, it's the 14th of December. You need this one to be able to boot PinOS on a Pi 5. But if I switch over to my Pi 4 and have a look, no SD card, switch on. So now when it's booted up, it's telling me it's the 18th of October on this one. So it definitely needs an update and it would update through Raspi config, but only to a certain bit. So let's put an OS in it. Uh, we're going to go with Raspberry Pi OS and let it boot from that. There we go. It's just picked it up and it's starting to boot. Now the normal way to update the bootloader would be to go control alt T and put in sudo raspi config go to advanced and you can see bootloader version and latest and this will update this because it had an old version so if we do finish now and reboot you can see my bootloader is showing the 6th of December now now this is the official latest release but there is a newer version and that newer version is the one we need for pin OS and you can use this method for newer versions that haven't been released yet, but again, do this at your own risk. So let's boot it up by putting the SD card in again. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna open this document because it's got some details in it and the download link that Marsan gave me. And let's just pop this at the top. So this is the link from GitHub. So copy that into your browser. Let's paste that in. And you can see that it downloads on its own, but you can see I've got a one next to mine. And the reason for that is because I've already downloaded it. So let's go into my downloads folder, which is here. And here's the two EEPROMs. So I don't need the second one. So let's just delete that one. So you'll have this file in your downloads folder. What we need to do now is close down the files app open a terminal and type in sudo pcman fm you can see we've got a little warning because we have access to all our files in this so be careful what you move around click on downloads and find that eprom so let's just copy that and go to file system root if the lib folder isn't showing up for you you need to go to view and show hidden files and that will enable you to be able to see that so let's open that up and then go to firmware raspberry pi bootloader 2712 because this is the one for the raspberry pi 5 and go to the latest folder and then paste that in so you can see it's added it to all the other previous ones that were there I've actually noticed this says beta, so I need to change that to latest. And save that. So now in terminal, uh, you probably have this already, but if you haven't got it, you need to pop this in. So that will install RPI-EEPROM. And you can see mine is already the latest version. And then we're gonna run this. and paste that so bootloader update available current 6th of december latest 14th of december please reboot to apply the update so let's do reboot so now if we go control alt t and get a rpi dash eprom dash update dash a you can see that the current version is the 14th of december so we've successfully updated to the latest version. So now on this Pi, which couldn't boot PinOS before, if I shut it down, I've now put my PinOS SD card in there 
and if I press boot, it will start booting PinOS. And it wouldn't go past this point before, but as you can see now, it's continuing on and we'll get the Ubuntu screen. But I'm going to reboot this because I've only got one operating system on there and there's not a lot of point in having just one operating system with PinOS. So let's power off. Now when I restart, I'm going to press shift and hold it. And that takes us into PinOS. So let's put some things on here so you can see Ubuntu's already ticked. Let's go with Recall Box and also Raspberry Pi OS, but let's go for the light version uh, under minimal. So ARM64 light, nothing else really on there at the moment, but expect new operating systems to get added every now and then. So let's hit install. You've got to type in delete, you only have to do this if you're overwriting an old system, and hit OK, and yes. And there's a bit more information about this in the previous PinOS video, if you want to know a bit more about the installation, but I'm just going to leave that and come back when that's all done. Okay, so that says it's installed successfully, so let's hit OK. And let's try booting Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Now this doesn't have a desktop environment, but let's just give it a go. Yeah, that's booting up. It does this on a first time boot and it's rebooting because it would have booted this OS for the first time. Yeah, and it's gonna get me to do all the normal setup. And here it is. So this is Raspberry Pi OS. So I've logged in, I'm just gonna reboot. And when it reboots, if I press shift, I can now pick a different operating system. You've already seen Ubuntu. So in this menu, we just go to exit and pick a different operating system and hit boot. And here's Recallbox booting up. And I've got a separate video on Recallbox, but just to show that it's working. And as you can see, all of that's working absolutely fine. So let's quit out of that. And if we shut down, and this time we'll boot back into Ubuntu. So again, exit, let's pick Ubuntu and boot. And what's quite cool about PinOS is it makes all the folders available in the other operating systems. So if I click on the file manager and let's just maximize that, you can see that we've got our recall box folder. Uh, we've also got our folder for Raspberry Pi OS and we can access uh, you know, things like the boot partition uh, with recall box we can access the share folder and things like that so we can copy some ROMs in there. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks to Marsan for helping me get this up and running and thanks to everybody involved in getting PinOS up and running. It is great to see it on Pi 5. It's always been really, really good on Pi 4. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.